Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is the Herbaga, and I'll be playing the fine noblesse on Lee Chess and try to be as instructive as possible throughout the game. I hope this helps you out to improve your game as much as possible. And before you, we start off, I uh, would just like to you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and press the bell icon over there so that you always get a notification for the videos that I put up. Uh, I'm putting up a video daily, trying to work as hard as possible, uh, apart from working uh, regularly, which I do at office, that's a separate thing altogether. Uh, but just trying to improve my game and also to my viewers that if they can probably improve their game if they are just watching these videos sometime in the day. So I hope you contribute uh, to my channel, con continue to support uh, it and just learn from here as much as possible. So thanks, a big thanks to all of you for your support so far. Got 300 sub subscribers now. So yeah, should be very good from here on. Let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. We'll play the London system. So D4 and then Bishop to F4. Uh, we can get the knight Yep, on F3. And then pawn to e3. And now we'll develop the light square bishop on d3. And now we can play the normal move c3 here. Okay, he plays h6 in advance. We're just trying to take extra pawn here if he doesn't move the knight now. Because after I capture, he takes back. He loses a pawn because of the queen on c2. So he goes back, rightly so. And we'll continue our development. All the minor pieces are developed now, as you can see. I'm ready to castle either side of the board. Here, a small trick if you take i can take back with the pawn if you don't i can take and spoil your pawn structure that's one of the advantages or i can just let it be let the situation be as it is pin the knight maybe or he moves the knight interestingly or not we'll see that because a queen check is coming first of all if you go back with your knight, that's worse because I'm going to plant a bishop now. So just playing as per the moves of the opponent, whatever he does, respond him in a better way. I think I should take on with the bishop here. And after this, I can capture with the knight. I'm threatening a lot of stuff. I'm threatening queen. I'm threatening to capture on d6. He moves the queen. I can take on the bishop in that case. He takes back. Get the knight into the frame again. The other knight. Oh, is my knight getting pinned over there? No, not really. I can move to e5. Okay, let's get the other knight to e5. Just that we are pawn ahead here. I can exchange the queen maybe. Let's see if he wants to. Yep, he has to, maybe. I'm threatening check by e7. Won't play it so early. Let's just castle. Threatening the knight. The knight goes back. Very stalled on e5.
can just kick the knight away. He comes over here, but not really a good spot for the knight. Yep, I'm going to take spoil his pawn structure further. Um, yes, yeah, a double pawn, which are isolated as well. That's that's kind of the worst thing possible. Mm. Let's remove the pawn from here. That's make makes my pawns more centralized. And just play the pawn forward to b4. He can't capture because his rook will be hanging otherwise. And this makes it worse for him. And if he aligns, if he aligns, we are just pushing with the pawn forward, which he doesn't. And we take. Don't want to lose our own pawns. We can exchange the last. The rook's in the last rank. The rook in the last rank. And it's pinned. Okay, he moves. Still, I think I can just. Okay, let's push the king forward. Always, always a good idea at the end game. King's in the king in the good square. He's losing out on the pawn here, I guess. How is he saving it? I'm getting the rooks aligned now again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not that mad. Maybe I am. I'm going for capture on c7 now. That's one way to deal with it. I don't want to give the pawn, so I'll just go back. Remember, I have a king which can go to the d3. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Winning on time as well, so no time pressure. Once I come to d2 or d3, I control the c pawn as well, so up all myself full. How about pushing the pawn forward? Attacking the rook as well. I hope he doesn't trap his rook now. That would be sad. The pawns are cruising. Okay, I have an idea. This rook is only safe on one square, which is h4 after this. I just play the pawn forward. And in the next move, his rook is trapped, maybe. He probably saw that coming. Okay, let's take. And here I come. With the pawn, yep. Are you going attacking the pawn? I'll defend it. Now we go with the rook and exchange the and take the pawn on c7 and exchange the rook as well. If he's thinking to align the rooks on the e file, I can just go king to d2. That saves the pawn because the rook is there. Okay, finally gives up on the pawn. How about pushing it forward? Nice idea. I like it. Can play c5 here. That solidifies the pawn chain. Very tough to break from here. Just go back, save the king. And now that you're not doing anything, here I come with the second rook. Threatening to take on the pawn. Let's take. 
And there's one more good thing. I can exchange the rooks. Now you have to take another option. And then I get the queen. So game over. Well, that was long bank. Just having fun afterwards. Here you go. The other look as well. If you want. If you don't want, it's okay. What now? Uh, take it. All yours. I got the queen now. How are we doing checkmate? Let's start from a check. Always good. And follow it up with Rook here on e4. Oh, he could have given some extra time to play and get a checkmate from here. Anyways, uh, let's see the game. It was mating four. Okay, nice. Let's start off uh, d4, e6, bishop to f4, London system. He plays d5 now. Standard moves from black. And same from white. Knight to f3, he develops the other knight on c6, and I played e3 here. He plays f6, knight f6, bishop to d3, gets the knight in between to e4. Of course, I can spoil his pawn just straight away. Didn't want to do that. Played c3 here. He plays f6, I get the queen on c2, eyeing for the extra pawn. He goes back. Always a bad option when you have to move your pieces twice in the opening. Here I developed the other knight, completing my development of the minor pieces. Only the castling is remaining. Uh, but minor pieces are out. Queen is pretty much good sitting on c2 as well. So yeah, development is done. Whereas if you see black, uh, that both the bishops are still sitting inside. Uh, in fact, white bishop will require a couple of moves to get out of his place. That's sad for him. He gets the bishop out. On d6 now, I blocked the bishop path. Uh, not willing to exchange the bishops there, so just got my knight planted on e5. He moves knight to a5 here. I go with a check. He goes back with the knight. I plant the bishop now, and he castles. And I take on the knight. He takes back with the pawn. I take with the knight. Do I have to take with any other thing? Nope, that was fine. And then he brings queen to d7. I capture on the uh, on the bishop as well. He takes back with the queen. I go with the other knight. He develops the bishop. I again con connect my knights there. He captures. I take back with the queen this time. Offering him queen exchange, which should not be good for black here because white is pawn ahead, but he still takes it. So I take back. And from here, it's like... Uh, sort of a comfortable victory, I would say, just castling, and then he attacks the knight, I go back to e5, centralized knight, always helpful, he plays knight to e4, I just play f3, he has to move the knight, knight comes to d2, so attacking the knight again with the rook, just playing as per his moves, uh, he gets the knight there, I capture, spoil his pawn structure, and then break open the b uh, file as a file as well by moving uh, b3 um, pawn exchange happen on the b5 and then yep just pushing the pawn forward because he can't take because if he does bad things await him so he can't take that and he moves the pawn forward i align my rooks on the a file he has to move away i take on the a pawn he plays rook to c6 here I could have exchanged the rooks, but I wanted to save the c-pawn first, so I do that. He gets his king to h7. I move to f2. Uh, again, end game, so kings have to be as advanced as forward. Also, if you can see, uh, these are like three good strong pawns against one. Uh, you can't count that as of any help. Um, he moves the rook away. I try to attack on the c7, though isolated pawn there. He tries to defend it, and 
I just try to build some attack on the C7. The idea is to get the other rook, and then, of course, I'm winning on the pawn. He plays f6 here. I try to go for the exchange, but he plays the rook now to c6. Again, I don't want to lose out on pawn, so bring back. It's kind of a slow way to deal with the opponent. Don't just harass him mentally, basically. Don't give him anything to play with at the end. He tries to go for pawn exchange. Uh, I just push the pawn forward, making sure he has to move his rook. He does. Here, I try to set him up for a uh, rook trap. The idea was, if he doesn't move the pawn, suppose he plays uh, h5 here. Uh, I'm just trapping his rook, and it's not going anywhere. The only square was h4, which was controlled by g3 in the previous move. That was the plan. Uh, but here in the game, he played uh, e4 rather. So I captured. He takes back with the rook. I go to attack the rook. He goes back, tries to attack the pawn. Again, I just defend it. He tries to exchange the pawn now. And I proceeded with further on uh, d7. He tries to stop it from moving further. But again, I have a good move. Solidify the pawn structure. Uh, this pawn chain is too strong to be broken. That's why white is 6.2 head. He tries to exchange. Oh, he tries to just move my king away from there. I just bring it back. Could have gone above as well on c4. Both are pretty comfortable. Uh, he tries to align his rook now on the e file. I also try to align my rooks in the seventh rank. He does align. I take on the pawn first. He moves the king. And instead of now saving the pawn, I just went with rook exchange leaving him no option but to capture. And then he moves away with his rook. I play the pawn forward. He gives a check. Let's move ahead. He takes the pawn, but I get the queen and it's made in four. He moves. It's made in two. Here. Yeah. Oh, I have to give him check from the rook. Yep. Only square. And then it's made with the pawn. Oh, that would have been ironic. That's very nice pawn. Having, giving a checkmate to the king. Yep, uh, was a pretty good game in complete control of uh, the white pieces here. It's it's a very good option to always play uh, the London system from white. Gives you control in the opening. And once you've got that control in the opening, you can always play on. Uh, it's simple that you have to take a pawn advantage and then hang on to it. Don't leave that pawn advantage. Uh, aligning rooks is always helpful. Uh, saving pawns is always helpful. That's what we did in the game. Uh, again, everyone thinks that if there's a pawn exchange on offer, either you advance, either you capture or don't move it, but or save the pawn. But here I preferred always pushing the pawns. I can easily go for exchange and still win from it. But why to give him the tempo? with the rook so just play that forward that was the some uh, tactics that i applied oh uh, the senti pawn loss is nice so far the computer is still running the analysis the stockfish 11. Uh, so yeah a good game i hope you learned something good from the game and you try to implement in your games when you play on the board or online there was just one mistake that happened in between i guess where I could have uh, not captured with the knight, uh, maybe with the queen for, on the first go when there was a complex situation in the beginning. There was some inaccuracy there. Yep, yep. That was something which I could have avoided, but yeah, otherwise it was pretty much in control, as you can see. And 25 centi point loss, no blunders at least. So yeah, that's a good score to have. I hope you like the video. Please do let me know your feedback. Do comment and do play the London system. It's a very good opening, solid yet dynamic opening from white. And keep watching and sharing. Uh, thanks for all your support as always. Take care. Bye-bye.